In this video, we will route the cables from the CAU up to the tray and show routing options of the basket, the inner basket, and the splice modules. This is installed in a six ground Apex X2 with inner basket. The tools needed for installing an Apex include a can wrench, optional 3 8 by 7 16 inch ratchet wrench, cable preparation tools, splicing tools, safety glasses, and all other safety equipment required by your organization. At this point, all cables should be secured in the Apex closure. Make sure all port plugs are in place for ports with no cable and that all cables with small diameter bushing have them engaged prior to activating the compression screw. First, tighten all six gel compression screws. Tighten the gel compression screw with a 216 can wrench or similar tool. This will tighten to a positive stop. A manual 3 8 inch ratchet wrench can be used to reach the stopping point. There is no need to tighten past that stop. Do not over tighten as this can cause damage to the sealing wedge. This is an optional inner basket on the X2 and X3 Apex models, which is designed to assist with the separation of fibers in the basket. The basket can be used to separate ribbon and loose tube fibers, storing either wherever is most convenient, separate backbone fibers from access fibers, separate high security or VIP traffic fibers from the coil basket, or north-south from east-west. The basket has many applications if you need it. It is also easily removable in the field if not needed for an installation. If you need extra space in a high tube count mid sheath, remove the inner basket and install the supplied basket tabs. To install basket tabs into the apex, simply take the tab in proper orientation, mold dial on the bottom, engage one side of the tab in the opening and rotate, squeeze and engage the second side of tab. The process to install or reinstall the inner basket in Apex varies by family. For X1 and all X2, make sure basket tabs are not installed in basket. Rotate inner basket hinge tabs and insert one side of the inner basket into lowest holes. These openings under the tray are position one. Rotate inner basket into position and engage second tab. There is no release tab on this inner basket. Raise and lower the inner basket to ensure it is fully hinged and will snap into the basket body. For all versions of X3 except X3H, simply raise inner basket to about 45 degrees and push hinge into position one of the spline. Do not force it. There is a spot where it is designed to be installed. There is also a splice tray lock supplied with each X3 apex. Simply rock the lock in and press down to remove. This helps with a heavily loaded basket. Starting cable installation varies by cable type. Any backbone cables will be tied close to the spline with Velcro or tie wraps. All branch and drop cables will be secured to the basket or inner basket as low as possible without stressing the fiber too far. This will vary upon the needs of each specific installation. All input fibers, tubes, or mesh are secured to the basket or inner basket. All fibers and tubes will be routed to the basket around the crown of the basket and then back out behind the spline and up to the tray. Fiber will never go from the CAU directly to the splice tray. There are multiple tie down locations to secure fiber in layers if desired. These slots accommodate Velcro as well as cable ties for securing the bundles in the basket. Keep in mind the size of your lower storage if using an inner basket. All lower fibers must be stored below this point on X2. On X3, it must be below here for inner basket to be used. All designated fibers that you will be bringing to the splice tray, buffer tubes, or mesh run into the basket around the top and back out to go to the splice tray. All unused fiber or dark fiber from mid sheath or in cuts is to be stored in the basket. As stated earlier, loose tube cable stores safer and easier if returned to its original lay. Do not try to store tube ribbon still in the tube as AFL cannot confirm the minimum bin radius of all manufacturers ribbon in fiber tubes. This concern only applies to ribbon in a tube. There are many convenient tie down locations in Apex baskets for both Velcro and cable ties. On ribbon, we recommend Velcro. For a loose tube, any typical tie down method is acceptable. For retention of spiderweb ribbon and other non-matrix ribbon fiber, we recommend using the soft side of the Velcro towards the fiber to protect it from snagging on the hook side of the Velcro. 
When storing mid-sheath or unused end fibers from all cables and apex, coil them to fit between the spline and the top of the basket. Be careful of minimum bid readiness and not to kink the buffer tubes while storing. Secure the basket in the bottom of the basket, leaving room for active fibers to pass. If backbone is mid-sheath, cut tubes or fibers that do not need to pass through. Recommended measurements are based on mid-opening cut, but the installer may desire to shift this cut for more fiber on the service side of the coil to work with. Route any unused mid-sheath fibers and secure with slack coil in the basket. Route designated fibers around the basket and cross behind the spline to the opposite side of the splice tray. Leave enough slack that the loop is not tight, but also not so loose that it can be easily snagged. For X1 and all X2, starting at position one and working up sequentially, rotate splice tray hinge tabs and insert to one side of the spline and rotate into place to engage the second hinge. Raise the splice tray to ensure it is fully hinged. Then using the release tab on the spline and lower the splice tray. Repeat for all trays being installed. For all versions of X3 except X3H, note that a square X3 splice tray cannot be installed in position one and two of the spline. There are six tray positions for these trays, position three through eight. Round end trays are designed to fill position one and two in a high capacity ribbon application, X3H. Simply raise the splice tray to about 45 degrees and push the hinge into position three of the spline. Do not force it. There is a spot where it is designed to be installed. Raise the splice tray to ensure engagement and then release the lock tab on the back of the spline and lower the splice tray. There is also a splice tray lock supplied with each X3 apex. Simply rock the lock in and press down to remove. This helps with a heavily loaded splice tray. If using loose tube, bring the buffer tube to the tray and mark where the buffer tube will end inside the tray. Secure all fibers, tubes, and mesh to the splice tray. There are many ways to secure fiber in an apex splice tray. Loose tube with provided adhesive foam and tie wraps. Use two tie wraps per tube. Loose tube with advanced fiber retention system or AFRS V-clip. Hard matrix ribbon and foam retention kit. Hard matrix or non-matrix ribbon and transport tube. Hard matrix or non-matrix ribbon and mesh and foam. Hard matrix or non-matrix ribbon mesh and AFRS V-clip. Here are some examples of routed apex closures. Mid-sheath X2 build with 288 loose tube using supplied foam and tie wraps. Butt splice X2S build with 1728 spiderweb ribbon with AFRS, ribbon basket, and mesh kit. Mid-sheath X3 with 864 spiderweb ribbon and a 48 fiber loose tube cable with inner basket. If your preference is to leave mid-sheath and loose end fibers on top for ease of future access, simply reverse the process. Install the working fibers at the bottom of the basket and the storage fibers on top.